The signs of the times are upon us. The prophecies are being fulfilled right before our very eyes and those that know the prophecies of the Bible will know that to be true. Are you pre-trib or post-trib? No matter what I say about prophecy, there will be people that agree and those that vehemently disagree. That's expected. So there is a debate over the pre-tribulation and mid-tribulation and the post-tribulation beliefs. Who's right and who's wrong? I'm not about to settle that here. What has this to do with American entitlement? A lot. Hold on. The answer may shock you. I ask you, watch till the end. I recently did a video where I indicated that I believe that the Lord is going to call the church away before the events of the seven year tribulation period. This is called the rapture. Then the comments started flowing in. They were amusing to read. I'll admit, I prefer the amicable comments though. Anyway, one common thing that I hear most of the angry post tribulation people saying is that pre-tribulation rapture believers are deceived and entitled. They argue that the disciples suffered, the early church was persecuted. What makes you think that we will escape this? One fellow said that the Lord has to make the church go through the tribulation period to straighten her out and to purge her. Hmm, interesting. I guess the blood of Jesus was not enough to do that. So. Ultimately, the general thinking behind the post-tribulation rapture belief is that the church has to endure the tribulation because she is not worthy of heaven. But are pre-tribulationists truly entitled? I submit to you an emphatic no. I've never met a true pre-tribulation rapture believer that did not hold in high regard the sayings of Christ or considered themselves privileged. In other words, they never underestimate the suffering that is going to come in the tribulation period. They know what the Lord said and they choose to follow His instructions. Luke 21, 36, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Here's true entitlement dabbled with a little bit of ignorance. To claim that the current church has endured nothing is to disregard the most persecuted group of people in the world today, Christians. Thousands of people are being slaughtered for their faith in Jesus Christ every year. But we with our padded pews and air conditioned sanctuaries want to claim that Christ is going to make the entire body of Christ endure the tribulation because the first world church has to learn a lesson. Man, miss me with that. The American church is not the church. The European church is not the church. Even the way I see men and women addressing God and using the scriptures reeks of entitlement. I heard one preacher say, I told God you better bless me because your word says you have to. Is that the church? I guarantee you will hardly find that trash in the Chinese underground church or the Persian church or the Pakistani church or the Indian church or in the genuine African church where Boko Haram is brutally murdering Christians. I guess after all that these brothers and sisters have faced, the Western church will be their Achilles heel. I grew up in a church without walls. No, that's not the name of the church. We literally had no walls. We had a giant shed. When rain fell, the people in the church would have to move to one side so that they wouldn't get wet. People came to throw rocks and rotten eggs at our church. One man wanted to pull our shed down with a truck. People came to murder the pastor while he was preaching. I've had doors shut in my face for the gospel's sake in my country and here in America. Don't come tell me that the church has suffered nothing. That's a statement born from utter ignorance. Some say that the great apostles suffered persecution. What makes us think that we would be exempt from it? My response to that is, what makes you think that you are as worthy as the apostles to suffer persecution as they did? Worthy? Yes, worthy. The Bible tells us of the apostles in Acts 5 and 41, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. There is not a true believer in Christ that will shirk away from persecution should it come, for this is the blood 
of the church. This is the very foundation of where we came from. The more men are entitled, the more folly they entertain. I heard one man say that the great falling away of the church will be because of the pre-tribulation rapture teaching. Hmm. Never mind the apostasy and the doctrines of demons and devils. Ignore the poisons of New Ageism and secular humanism infiltrating the church. It is the preacher believers that will cause the great falling away. Interesting. Whether you choose to believe it or not, Jesus Christ is coming soon, sooner than you think. Post-tribulationists must deny the doctrine of imminence. In your view, certain things must occur before he comes. This is deceiving. He can come whenever he wants, however he wants. I say this because of love for my brothers and sisters. Be ready at all times, for you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will make his appearance. As for me, I'm convinced that he is coming soon. Well, what if he doesn't come pre-trib? Then I'm mid-trib. And if he doesn't come then, then I'm post-trib. Any which way you look at it, he's coming. And for those of you that believe that there is no rapture, I 100% agree with you. There is no rapture for you. In the kingdom, you receive everything by faith. Now think about that. Song in every verse